Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to uh, part two of the Algae Scrubber and or Chato Reactor video series. This is where we had left off. I had pressure tested the chamber to make sure that it was going to hold the water. I mean, it's not a lot of water, but I didn't want it leaking on any of the uh, electronics, so it was a good idea just to do that part. These are the two end caps. I've already uh, routed out where the two pipes are going to fit down through so I can lift it in and out. And as you can see with the silicone, it's uh, more than strong enough. I can't pull it apart. Uh, the reason why I... Well, whenever I build things, let's just start with that. I try to make uh, a lot of my processes uh, universal so I can use them for other techniques. Like I have other projects in mind for this for uh, later on. And so having extra tensile strength with the silicone and the loom is actually kind of cool. And it's just something that I hope will lead into something else later on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, same as the before, I'm going to uh, just tape it off and sand and uh, silicone that all together. Now this particular little scrubber is going to go on a tank for a client. This particular client, uh, the tank uh, really doesn't have any kind of filtration. It is a marine aquarium. Uh, they want to uh, put in uh, some corals and uh, a fair amount of fish and lots of stuff. It's a, like a drop-in center for kids. And well, they can't really afford anything. Uh, so they're not paying for this scrubber, but uh, it gives me a chance to uh, test it out to see if because <laughs> it's very rare that I get an aquarium where uh, this particular thing will have an impact. I mean, if you have an aquarium and it has all kinds of bells and whistles on it, like a protein skimmer, a refugium, or a bio pellet reactor, or any of the other stuff, it's very difficult to really measure the kind of difference that you might get from an algae scrubber like this. So this, because this tank is fairly bare bones. It gives me an opportunity to test to see how well this is going to work. So which is kind of cool. So what I'm going to do once I get this running and test it, I mean it has to be tested because I have to make sure it is going to flow properly for uh, at least two weeks between visits. So it's the kind of thing that has to be very reliable, it's not going to plug up, that sort of stuff. So that's uh, very important. And as you can tell, just building a box here, uh, the only downside to this particular build style is you need to let the silicone cure between uh, each stage so it does take a little bit of time. This power uh, supply is uh, way stronger <laughs> than it needs for this little build but it's the only spare one I had kicking around so uh, it is the one I'm going to end up using. The nice thing with this is it just slides right out like that and it makes it very easy for cleaning. Now the box itself is going to stay modular like this. Normally I think if I were doing this as a permanent build I would uh, probably glue the bottom on at least but for the time being I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, like I said I'm just testing this all out. So what we're going to do now is we have to connect the two sides um, the two strips so what I'm going to do is just run a wire across uh, from one of the leads on one side to the leads on the other side uh, what I'm going to do once this is uh, soldered in, in place is I'm going to tape it and then I'm going to also um, use silicone. Because I have to uh, silicone off the leads anyway just so there's no corrosion. Uh, that's the biggest problem with salt water is, uh, <laughs> well, salt. Salt is bad. <laughs> it gets into all kinds of stuff. I mean, the power supply itself is a sealed unit. It's waterproof. There's no problem whatsoever with it. Uh, but anything like this where you're soldering, uh, it, it needs to be sealed. Once the testing's all done, or like a, after I run it on my system for a while, and I hook it up onto the client's tank, well, before I start running it there, I plan on uh, testing the water. I'm going to test it for uh, mostly just nitrates and phosphates, uh, but I probably will check a few other parameters as well, just to see if anything else changes. But I'm not really expecting, I know you should have an open mind when you do these things, but I'm actually really not expecting a big change in the chemistry. But, uh, experience from running refugiums tells me that it will actually I have um, kind of like more of a subjective change. Uh, like I said, the amount of algae that grows in the tank kind of thing, uh, or on the rocks or that sort of stuff. It may uh, end up creating a more stable environment. That's what I'm actually hoping for, and therefore I have to do less maintenance. But again, that's uh, the whole point of doing this, is to uh, see how this all works out. 
So here we go, I've uh, connected all the leads, and we're just going to plug it in here now and uh, make sure <laughs> I connected everything right. And there we go, we're all good. The nice thing about uh, the aluminum, oh sorry, here we're just, uh, this is the silicone I told you about, and it's going to put it on. And also I'm going to use them to hold those two wires in place. Uh, there's tape, they're taped down at the moment, but what I'll do is once uh, the silicone dries, I will remove the tape and it'll be good to go. Anyway, as I was saying, the aluminum is really great for this because uh, it's very, uh, well, it's shiny. So it's going to cause a lot of a reflection, and that way, uh, once this is all hooked up, uh, it will uh, be very bright inside here, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to use this popsicle stick just to smooth up the silicone, make sure that there's no uh, gaps where any kind of uh, salt, well, there won't be any salt spray, but any uh, kind of uh, moisture is going to get in there. So there we go. Now, yeah, that's actually really kind of cool. That's uh, very bright. And the reason, the other reason why I'm enclosing this in a loom like this is I don't really want to have a lot of light leak uh, into the room or anything. So uh, this is just to confine that. If I'm not sure if I'm going to cover up those ends any more than they are now, but uh, we'll see as this thing runs. So there you go. This is the intake pipe, uh, and that's going to be the outflow pipe. And what I had to do is I had to machine a piece of Delrin. It's going to act as an adapter between uh, this power head and the input. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook it up now. And I managed to pick up some uh, Chato. And what I'm going to do is uh, fill her up and get it running. So here it is, hooked up over one of my tanks. Um, and it's just going to run for a week. And then I'm going to pull it apart. And we're going to see how dirty this thing is. If I want to maintain uh, this being easy to take apart and clean and put back together, if I decide I want to uh, block off those two slits, what I might have to do is attach a piece of aluminum or a piece of thin acrylic to the actual acrylic chamber itself. Uh, that way I won't have any interference uh, getting in and out of this thing. There we go. Uh, no leaks inside there. That's really quite good. Now, I forgot to show you <laughs> the amount of chato I put into this which is unfortunate because I wanted to show you the amount of growth. Uh, you'll have to take my word out, it's about four times bigger than it was when I put it in. This is a week later, and you can see it's just completely filling the chamber. Uh, I ran it 24-7. Uh, I wanted to uh, see how much growth I can get. I know a lot of people, when they run these things, uh, will run it as on an opposite schedule to the lighting in the aquarium to help stabilize things. Uh, but I just wanted to grow... Uh, as much as possible and I wanted to make sure that it was going to you know not plug anything up and I want to see how much material I can actually uh, remove from the aquarium this way and as you can tell an awful lot of dirt is coming off of this well mostly that is just uh, algae growth but that when you look at these things that you have to look at in the sense that this is algae and uh, dirt or whatever you want to call it that is not in the aquarium itself so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide this up and I'm going to put a piece back in the size, <laughs> the size of what I had uh, before uh, so you can see how much growth there actually was. And then I'm going to run it for another week uh, and see how much that grows. I'm not going to bother showing you all that because, uh, well, it's just, uh, it's, just look at this. <laughs> this is the same kind of result. One thing I found is there was, I found bristle worms in here, which is really kind of bizarre. I wasn't expecting that at all. So I pulled those out. But one other thing I want to do with this is I want to try another species of algae. Uh, in one of my tanks that I have that I maintain for a client, I ended up with this macroalgae. It was kind of, uh, kind of cool looking. So I wanted to try something different. And I'll, it may end up just being what I'm going to do is, uh, as this progresses, I'm going to may just use some sort of material, uh, like an iner inert material, and... Uh, just have algae growing in it. So this is the amount that I started with, and you can see how much I removed. I mean, that has to have some kind of impact. And this is the other uh, species of algae that I tried, and I did that for a week as well. And then what's next step is to hook this up to the tank that's going to go on for the client, and that will be in a later video, and I'm going to be running this for quite some time, hopefully getting some kind of uh, answer for you as far as viability of this as far as uh, chemistry in an aquarium goes um, but that's for much later from now so anyway thank you very much for watching if you like this style of video please like and or subscribe and i will keep you updated on this thanks for watching